Imagine you could change the world. Imagine you had the power to solve the problem of waste. Imagine you could be the hero that saves our planet from plastic pollution. I sometimes imagine I could be this hero. And I would probably call myself Recycle Woman or Captain Waste. <laughs> and I would save the planet from plastic pollution by refusing to buy unsustainably packaged products. And if enough people would follow this, I think we could really change the world. At least this concept of consumer power exists and we consumers can drive the market with our purchasing decisions. Therefore, I do believe that we can all be superheroes and that we can change the world to a more sustainable one. But here comes the problem. We lack the knowledge to use our power correctly. Therefore, even if I want to be Captain Waste, I still stand in front of the supermarket shelves and I do not know what to buy. I feel lost. To get to the core of this problem, I think the first question that we need to answer is, why do we even need packaging in the first place? And here comes my answer. Basically, packaging fulfills two purposes. It is meant to protect what it is selling and to sell what it is protecting. Looking at the first part a little closer, packaging is meant to protect the product inside. And this is exactly why we can find something like this in the supermarket at times. A cucumber wrapped in plastic. Amazing, right? Um, when I see this in the supermarket, I think to myself, why? <laughs> and here comes why. The plastic is meant to protect the cucumbers. It is meant to prolong the shelf life of the cucumber, and in this way also to prevent food waste and reduce carbon emissions. But of course, there are also cases where plastic packaging is completely unnecessary and should be avoided. But how do we know that as consumers? We find ourselves completely overwhelmed with intransparent sustainability claims, not being able to differentiate between seemingly and real sustainable options. And this is why I'm here today, to help you navigate the recycling jungle with three examples. Together, we will try to answer this question. Which packaging is recyclable? And I brought three examples with me, and before I give you my response, I would like to hear yours. With a little applause vote, <laughs> I would like to invite everyone to vote for their favorite example, for their winner of recycling. Let's start with packaging option number one, which, by the way, smells incredibly like coffee. Who thinks that this is the recyclable packaging option? Please clap now. All right, all right. Thank you. Let's move on with packaging option number two, my snack for after the talk. Who thinks this is the recycling winner? Okay, a little less. And last but not least, we have one more. Packaging option number three, which on this picture still has hummus inside, was my breakfast, also really delicious. Who thinks this is recyclable? Thank you. All right, I think we have a clear winner for now, but let's see. Let's start with packaging option number one. I think that some of you chose it because it's a paper packaging. The question is, is it really paper? And if we look closer, what we are protecting with our packaging is coffee. Now, we probably want to protect our coffee with uh, something that can prevent the aroma to go away, something that also protects the coffee from moisture. Now, have you ever spilled a cup of water on a paper sheet? Then you can probably imagine that a simple paper packaging is not sufficiently protecting the coffee inside. And this means that this packaging probably also has a layer of plastic or other materials of some sort to enhance the performance and to really protect the product inside. Now, what does this mean for recycling? It means that we have a combination of two materials that make recycling really challenging. At least with today's recycling technology, it's almost impossible to separate both value materials, paper and plastic, back and recycle them both into high-quality materials in the end again. Nevertheless, we can find more and more of this kind of paper packaging on the market, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. At least the usage of paper also reduces the usage of plastic. So how do we know as consumers when a paper packaging is a recyclable option? 
And here's what to do. Think about what's inside. Think about what product you're really buying and if you choose a packaging that can protect this product that is inside the packaging. Let's move on to packaging example number two. And I would like to explain it to you with a little habit of mine. As many of you, I enjoy the occasional glass of wine. <laughs> and especially here in the Freiburg region, where we have exceptional wine, the choice is quite immense, quite impressive, I would even say. So whenever I go to the supermarket, I stand in front of the wine shelf, I look to the left, I see lots of good, op good options. I look to the right, I see even more. I turn around, there's another wine shelf. So I try to choose a bottle based on different quality criteria, but yeah, let's be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> The bottle that I choose is, in the end, probably the prettiest one. And I hope I'm not the only one <laughs> that does this. And the same happens with other products. And now we're talking about the second purpose of packaging, which is selling the product inside. And marketing has gotten really good at this. Print, let's say, planet Earth on the packaging, make it green, and I probably believe it's sustainable. The truth, however, is, that colors, inks, large colorful labels, they all can hinder the recycling process and can reduce the recycled quality, the quality of the recycled material in the end. So the takeaway from packaging example number two is, less is more. Meaning that probably the most boring packaging is the most recyclable one. And this leads me to packaging option number three. The hummus packaging. As you can see, this hummus packaging consists of three parts. We have a plastic body, we have a seal, and we also have a lid. Now, what I did this morning after enjoying my hummus, I did something that you should not do. I stuck everything back together. The thing that you should do is actually separate all the components, which I'm trying to do now, and throw everything away separately, even if it goes into the same waste bin, because this helps detecting the different materials of the different components in the sorting and recycling process. The best example is probably the yogurt cup. If you imagine a yogurt cup, you have a plastic cup and an aluminum lid. So two materials that are completely different from each other in the same packaging. Now, a couple of months back, I visited a sorting facility and I saw how our waste is sorted into different lines for recycling according to the different materials. And what I saw in the aluminium stream was something that really caught my attention. Lots and lots of yogurt cups. And they explained it to me like this. The sorting technology is so advanced that it can even sort out smaller aluminium parts, like the aluminium lid on a yogurt cup, which is really good. But if just the aluminium lid is still attached to the plastic cup, the plastic is also sorted into the aluminium recycling stream and probably lost there. And this is something where we can all do our parts. We can just take one second to separate the components and throw them away. Now we have talked about all three examples. And based on this, I would say my response is also packaging option number three, as many of you chose it. However, we've also learned that it's not just black and white, and there are many aspects that we need to take into account. But there are also many steps that we can take we can think about the product inside, we can follow the concept of less is more, and we can also separate different components. My silver lining is that I still believe that we can all be superheroes. I think we can change the world if we are willing to gain the knowledge necessary to use our power correctly, and if also companies do their part and become more transparent. I dream of a tomorrow where consumers are equipped with the power of knowledge to drive sustainable change. But let's not wait until tomorrow. Let's drive change today. <laughs>